so I haven't done a 40k video in a while, so thought what better chance to show off my favorite elusive Xenos. Slogth. Remember when you played 40k and thought it was all sunshine and rainbows yet your Ranig's Armin and their Jenna Steeler cult babies are works of art that would make HP. Love a Cruft blush. The warp is little nightmare fuel, you say, but the warp is just full of people who were neglected by their parents. Polly after cutting crackers out of his diet, grumpy puppies, naked ladies, and Florida residents. Nothing of real fright, and then these fuckers get written into existence. Like a fever nightmare that crawled out of the dreams of someone who has PTSD from when they had jiggers on them. Don't look them up please dear god. The slogth are a literal swarm of maggots that eat dead bodies. Guess how they get the bodies dead in the first place? Although their favorite part of the body to chew on are the brains. When the slogth do eat brains they actually absorb its information and memories to find new places to inhabit and new victims to devour. It's also heavily implied that they get high off of this. It's all logo maggots now. Overview the slogth are aliens that look like swarms of maggots wearing tattered black robes and to make them perform a hostile takeover of your dreams tonight, uses masks to hide their beautiful faces. Because of their nature, they like to stay hidden in obscure places like deep within the lowest parts of hive worlds or your mom's basement, popping out long enough to om nom some unfortunate humans before slithering back off into the darkness. They've apparently been around for a really long time, but they're so damn good at staying hidden that no one knows how old they actually are, what their ultimate goal is or even the location of their home world. Some of the RPG fluff seems to imply that the Inquisition has standing orders to shoot anyone who runs into a slogth, which wouldn't help matters any. They also like to give their weird ass tech to greedy politicians and governors as a way to cause political disarray and to soften up the local Imperial Guard and PDF. Status nowadays the slogth and their fans are praying to Yogg-Sothoth that they get their own codex, but the slogth along with other minor races such as the Rackgill and the Inalians were the brain children, pun intended, of fantasy flight games, which puts their canon status into question. Not to mention the whole worm that walks thing is a long established horror trope that has been used in other RPGs before. Chances are that it will only happen when Games Workshop truly runs out of ideas money. Possible Crusade era connection the Slogth are alluded to several times across the Horus Heresy series, which makes sense considering that Forge Your World fluff guru Alan Bly was one of the lead writers of Dark Heresy, so might be indirectly using his big bad worm monsters as the terrible Bojimin from the galactic north and east that are only spoken of in whispers. In one of the Forge World books, a Warhound's character, prior to Angron's return to the Legion was critically injured by the Slogth murder mines at Rangda, which connects the Slogth to the Rangdon Xenocide campaigns which were fought by the Space Wolves and Archangels and possibly where one of the two unknown legions was destroyed. They are also mentioned as the discoverers and keepers of a young Alpharius in one of his spurious origin stories, but this account is a lie, but may have contained grains of truth. As the Slogth are known to be master infiltrators and frequently use humans to spy on their behalf, this raises some disturbing questions as to how he learned his infiltration skills and what the Slogth planned to do with him. The Rangda were described as being so powerful they nearly killed the Imperium stone dead even with the Emperor alive and kicking at the helm. Something no other foe has ever been able to do, and the Emperor was forced to unleash the Labyrinth of Night to defeat them. If the Slogth are the Rangda, then if they ever returned in force nothing would be able to stop them from buttfucking everything in their path. Technology well. Slogth owned the patent for disposable diapers as anyone who stumbles upon them will instantly shit their pants. However, despite their appearances the Slogth are a sufficiently advanced race with tech on par with even the Necrons. Their specialty is biomechanical technology aka technology with organic parts, so instead of training troops they essentially farm them and then stick it full of robotic parts if they didn't have them from the get go. They may or may not have zombie minions as most of their biomechanical constructs are usually constructed from the remains of others. One of the constructs they have is called a harvester construct which is a floating ball of flesh that has a robotic arm that goes around and decapitates people and preserves their heads inside said floating ball of flesh. For some reason. Yeah, they have flying ball sacks floating around decapitating people. Whoever has the brains to come up with these bizarre ideas must have been smoking some strong ass drugs. 
Better yet whose brains were the slog smoking the second one we know about is called a warrior construct which unlike the others has a shape and have an uncanny resemblance to human genitals. On the other hand, the warrior construct also looks like sea anemones with legs and teeth as the description given to them are. These pale, oval masses of fungal flesh are filled with purple veins and metal lattices. They also have necrotic beamers and have bone blades coming out of their tendrils. So in other words it's a biomechanical attack penis which is the slogs amalgamation containing all of 4chan or they just found HR. Geiger's art collection their clothing of choice and pseudo armor are called the shroud cloaks. These rags absorb and refract light and are alive in a sense as it moves and drives, making them look like misshapen humans in the distance. Shroud armor is a higher tier of shroud tech which actually clouds the perception of them. It's literal a robe that projects a mind rape field. Pleasant. For weapons the Slogth have some downright disturbing weapons more horrible than anything that Uranids can throw at ya. Necrotic weaponry are essentially guns that either rot away the flesh, or turn it to dust. The sources are unclear, but both ways are horrifying. The Watchers in the Dark are diminutive Xenos who follow around the Dark Angels. No one knows what they look like, for they are covered in large green robes and resist all sickers that try to scree them. Also all of them look a bit like Urko from the Masters of the Universe, Akati Man, one of the most homoerotic shows for kids. Heck they even have a character named Fisto, Uahi Man. Stay classy. Heck, in the TTS series, one of them is confirmed to sound just like Urko. The Watchers are extra dimensional creatures and only take their diminutive appearance out of habit when they enter the corporeal reality. The dimension where they originate from is not named or described. But the Watchers do not appear to be the warp based creatures. Wherever they come from, metrics such as time and space seem to be entirely irrelevant to them and they were able to view time as a three dimensional mosaic, yet were incapable of comprehending it in its entirety. However, they could hone in on particular details and determine their significance and try to influence events in subtle ways. Additionally, they were able to appear and disappear wherever and whenever they like, making them impossible to capture or sneak up on. The Watchers were first known to the people of ancient Caliban as mysterious Bojimin who wandered the forests. In reality, they were a Xenos race implied to be members of, or associated with the Cabal, a group dedicated to fighting chaos. They had been sent to Caliban to guard the Ouroboros, acting as its jailer and apparently prevent its abuses. By pure happenstance, humanity arrived on the planet during the Dark Age of Technology, and the Watchers had been watching humanity on Caliban for over 15,000 years, which means their influence probably predates the fall of the Elder. Regardless on the exact timing of the human colonization against formation of the Eye of Terror the planet became contaminated by warp energy due to its proximity, resulting in the great beasts who prowled the forests and a terrible time for all involved. The Watchers certainly knew of the activities of the Cabal, specifically that Eldred had attempted to pre-warn Fulgrim of the dangers of chaos which went unheeded, though the Watchers had also attempted to give their own warnings to the Lion and various members of the First Legion, especially when the rest of the Cabal specifically tried to get Alpharius and the Last Legion on board with them. The Watchers were also apparently aware of the potential outcome of what would happen if the Emperor's forces won during the Siege of Terror, i.e. The galaxy stagnating and chaos growing in strength, though the Watchers also had a difference of opinion with the members of the Cabal in that they believed chaos could not be defeated, only fought, which puts them at odds with the notion that chaos could somehow be defeated once and for all if Horus actually won. The Watchers seemed more interested in what happened to the Ouroboros than attempting to influence the outcome of the Horus heresy to one side or another. In any case, the Cabal was later eliminated by Elrod when he figured its members were doing more harm than good after he realized that Perpetuals were interfering with their ability to accurately predict the future. Elrod left the Watchers alone, implying that he either could not do anything to them, or they were not full members of the Cabal. However, they saw it as their duty to try and warn those in a position to do something. Although they were known to have communicated with the Lion in the past, his constant reliance on T'Challa is preventing them from contacting him directly, and so they spoke to various proxies such as Zahariel and Ferithrid Loss in the hopes that they could get the lion to change his mind, through a series of still unconfirmed events, which will likely be revealed in future Horus Heresy books. 
GW is nothing if not practice at draining your wallet. The watchers in the dark seem to take a considerable demotion from entities unbound by linear time and location, dropping to serve the dark angels as retainers and weapon bearers. They also have a curious interaction with Cypher and were noted to change their behavior when he visited the rock. They are presumably also the reason he constantly escapes each and every time he gets captured. Finally, they are also said to look over the comatose body of Lionel Johnson, asleep in the rock. As members of an faction dedicated to the war against chaos, regardless of their effectiveness in doing so, they are a big piece of evidence for the Dark Angels not being a secret Chaos Space Marine Legion in disguise. During Wrath of Magnus when the Changeling fled through the rock once it was discovered, it ran headlong into a Watcher carrying a Crozius on its form. The Changeling was horrified upon meeting it, recognizing it as some sort of anathema to its kind. Were they ever to turn into Chaos Marines, logically the Watchers would leave, presumably taking the slumbering Primarch with them. A watcher carrying hugging the perfidious relic of the unforgiven. Caliban, the predestination paradox perhaps, but I fear that the destruction of Caliban is our last hope for the future now. It will be the final blow that will sunder them. It's even the lion willing to commit such an act one of the watchers in the dark, viewing the end of the siege of terror as if it was a bad thing when the primordial annihilator was defeated on terror. A group of watchers lamented that chaos would run rampant and merely arise again on Caliban. After examining the potential futures in the mosaic of time, their collective plan to save the galaxy was to engineer the destruction of the planet, creating the only outcome they believed would work, although how this plan affects the future in any positive way has yet to be explained. However, the plan to destroy the planet would not actually come to fruition until 10,000 years later when Cypher visited the rock got Azrael to agree to travel to the ruins of Caliban where the three elements, Ouroboros, T'Chulcher and the Plaguehut held by Typhus would meet and create a portal back to the time of Luther's insurrection. Azrael would then destroy the time portal before the Death Guard made their way back and all the fallen angels made their way forward through the time stream to influence events and royally screw up the normal sequence of events. Though destroying the portal seemed to have the inadvertent effect of also destroying the planet in the past. This creates a predestination paradox, as the period from the 31st millennium though to the 41st millennium would have likely first existed in a time stream where Caliban was not destroyed up until a traveler from the future could initiate events to destroy the planet of the past, making one wonder what that initial outcome would have been like for the galaxy. The Watcher's response indicates the survival of Caliban is probably the worst case scenario, while Ezekiel reassures Azrael that it is probably for the best not to think too hard about it, but it does demonstrate the potential for changing history within the setting itself. Tabletop they appear do not appear on the table. As literal placeholders for the Dark Angels, Azrael comes with one which carries a Lion Helm, with Company Master and Ethwing Knights having the option to take them. Though in the last two cases they grant fear and adamantium will, we can say they do not appear as they are purely for show and don't do anything but symbolize Warger, with the option to not use their model at all or remove them if they get in the way. As of 8th edition, the Watchers are still here but with the changes in rules their function changed as well. Azrael's minion still carries around the helmet like before, but now the Watchers that accompany Deathwing squads provide a one-time chance to nullify an incoming enemy psychic power on a 3+, which is more reliable than using a sicker to deny powers. So order your men to stop their firing. I will show you my personal army build. Operator, it is time. Duva, how you say? Funky Monkey Inquisitor Cody is about to unleash the cheese. Lesser known fact, the entire Warhammer 40,000 universe and all its depressing crushing grim darkness, from the wearisome toiling of factory serfs, the endless struggle of the Imperial Guard against overwhelming odds, the callous judgment of the Inquisition, the fiery fanaticism of the Ekelshiarchy, the malevolence of the Chaos Gods, to the plots of the Necrons and Elder and all the rest is just volumes upon volumes of setup for the fact that there are mad scientist space orangutans zipping around. The Jokero are an ape-like race created by the old ones a long time ago, possibly while drunk. It is questionable if they are truly a sapient race despite being technologically advanced, because they don't possess a language, culture, or any greater motivation than bare survival. It is speculated their understanding about technology is coded into their genes, 
Much like or god boys, neck boys, pain boys etc. They differ from their green skinned brethren because their technology isn't psychically powered crap. These space apes are somehow potentially more advanced than the entire Imperium. Almost all of the Mechanicus, and, in different fields of technology, most elder craftsmen, they are capable of interstellar travel, and migrate as a pack in large, perfectly geometric spaceships which make use of invisible currents of energy, inherent to the fabric of the universe. While it is rare that they choose to do this, a large percentage of Jacaro live upon these spacecraft. Why they are never engaged in space combat is a mystery. The reason there are no recorded space battles with the Jacaro is the fact you need to survive to record them. Good luck surviving more than 3 seconds against one of their ships. They create digital weapons, pretty much all post Horus Heresy digital weapons, which some factions, mainly high up Imperials and influential Tech Priests, make use of. They also make the Spira suits found amongst the high nobility of Hive worlds such as Necromunda or worlds and the Calyxis sector. Mainly, rich Imperial snobs will somehow use Jokero as a protector at Protector Ape, a euphemism for forced labor, to get cool shit. Despite this, GW law says Jokero are extremely rare, and impossibly elusive to boot. They are fairly analogous to animals, and so are instinctively distrustful of other beings, almost always rightfully so. If you do manage, by some miracle, to get a hold of one of these orangutans, and not get curb stomped by their teeny multi laser rings and bracelets. You still need to manage to keep them. They have a nasty habit of knowing how everything every race could possibly build works and operates. Plus things nobody else in the universe knows. Naturally, this means that any prison they are held in is usually temporary. Despite any and all preventative measures. Although it may immediately tinker with the prison after escaping and then become trapped in the now improved prison. From which it will escape and restart the cycle. Logic is not a necessary component of the Warhammer universe. Keeping this in mind, it is not impossible to work with a Jokaro, and thus acquire more digital weapons. If you can convince them you are friendly, they won't run from you and you can essentially roll with them for a while, hopefully getting some digital weapon death bling into the bargain. If you are the grimdark version of Jane Goodall, you might even manage to acquire one as a pet co-worker, seeing as they are a very rare and valuable resource. However, this is exceedingly rare, and accounting for the vastness of known space, only the wellest to do of rogue traders, beastmasters, and super rich, eccentric imperial lords have a Jokero in their possession. At least one has been kept as a permanent retainer to an inquisitor and was happy to go along with whatever they wanted. It even repaired a super heavy tank to full working order and then proceeded to improve it in every conceivable way, making it as fast as a salamander which came in pretty handy when it came to tank shaking demons. Barring all this, Jokero are still stereotypically finicky, making do high keys on a whim, sometimes not at all, sometimes for days straight. There is no guarantee that the gadgets it makes will be digital weapons, however, anything it does make will assuredly be magnitudes more advanced, and smaller, than any imperial equivalent, if there is one. For example, if you plead at it for months on end to build you a finger mounted meltigan, and it can make a suddenly forehead mounted multi melter in 3 hours, the Jokero might still just ignore you, get hungry, and build an anti gravity energy field banana peeler. As said above, the Jokero mostly make things out of simple survival need, self-defense lasers, multi-dimensional backpacks, infrared goggles, and the like. Jokero in Warhammer 40k tabletop recently, with the Codex, Grey Knights including Jokero as a possible bodyguard unit for Inquisitors, TG quickly found a loophole in the rules that allowed them to field an entire army of space orangutans, the so-called Barrel of Monkeys army build. The result is that Codex, Grey Knights has been jokingly called Codex, Jokaro. By the way, you know those little shiny rings they have those extremely small, light, and tiny rings yeah. Those are all fucking Lascanons. And heavy flamers, and multi melters. At the same time, step 1, players 6000 points apocalypse game step 2, field inquisitor coated as HQ and 163 Jokaro step 3. Take a picture of your opponent's face when he realizes you have 163 less cannons or multi melters or heavy flamers. That is. Can't fuck up anything. Step 4. 
Step 5. Profit Step 6. Dire horrible death that could satisfy corn for centuries. Could. Visual aids. So I've recently moved Nick Bairdia merch over to Teesprings and have a few new designs. Listings are below the video and in the description. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services 